I'm Caitlin Stan. So we're seeing conditions continue to get worse as we head into the evening hours. From Myrtle Beach to Surfside and Garden City, we have team coverage. So what is the solution? How do you help those suffering with addiction and those suffering because they can no longer get the medication they need? The shooter is now in custody. Officials say he was taken into custody off campus and in just the last few moments, we learned he's around 18 years old. And WMF News anchor Caitlin Stanso got to talk to her exclusively about what her big move means. She joins us now live from outside the UN headquarters in New York City. Caitlin. Michael Ambassador Nikki Haley says she takes his position very seriously. The Wild Gators take on the Tigers, but Marlo, what can fans expect as they head to those games tonight? Are they going to need a jacket or blanket to take with them? Over the next hour, we'll be continuing our conversation with the candidates for mayor of Myrtle Beach. Let's give you an idea, though, of how this extra live coverage is going to go. As a local business owner, I'm sure you have a pretty good idea of what works and what doesn't. So what would you do here in the city of Myrtle Beach? to help businesses flourish. I've heard from several people that they kind of feel like they underestimated Hurricane Matthew and it seems like they're taking the storm a little more seriously. That's the silver lining. <laughs> Five are injured after shots were fired into a group of Republican lawmakers playing baseball. So a lot of new details coming out as this is a developing story and also coming up in about 20 minutes. We're taking you live again to Virginia. Raycom News reporter Rachel DePompa will have more details. A 24 pack like this one right here equals about three gallons. That means you will need 10 of these cases to last you for seven days. Certainly a lot of areas across our state feeling the impacts of Irma from the low country to the Midlands to here in the Grand Strand. And he was talking about some of those unseen dangers, things we might not uh, be aware of until after the storm completely passes and that's trees down. We've already seen some of that locally power lines down and then of course trying to work and get people back into their homes uh, afterwards. Just seven days after Ainer Middle School student Taylor Ibarra committed suicide, another young teen attending that very same school attempted to do the same thing. We did hear from one of the deputy coroners tonight and they said that he died from natural causes, but didn't go into any more detail about exactly what that meant. And we have reached out to several attorneys that have been involved in these cases, including Russell Long, who saw there the attorney that has been representing Alan Large, but we either haven't heard back at this point or they've said that they don't want to comment right now. April, May, June, July, August, September, October. We looked at those months and nearly identical. Well, it doesn't matter what field of medicine a doctor specializes in. This epidemic has touched every sector of health care. Breaking news now, Governor Henry McMaster holding a briefing right now on the impacts this winter storm is having all across the Palmetto State. He just started speaking in West Columbia. Let's listen in now. I think what parents are most scared of is that there is kind of a learning curve with these apps. You know, as the investigator said, every day there's a new one coming out. And while our kids are pretty knowledgeable about how to use them, parents right. might not be. He was up, he was down then, and a run that had people at home biting their nails, he sealed and delivered. Yeah. These aren't quite the big balloons that you would see in the Macy's Thanksgiving yeah. Day Parade, but nonetheless, still impressive. Hi everyone, Caitlin Stancil here. You may have noticed I'm not at the WMBF News Desk today, and that's because I'm in New York City. Any other big topics that stood out for you in the discussions today? Yeah, of course, we asked her about some of the threats that she's keeping a really close eye on globally right now. Being in this position here at the United Nations, she's interacting with the world quite literally. Uh, of course, North Korea on that list, Iran is on that list, and extremist groups like ISIS, Hezbollah, and Hamas. Now, we're not just talking about an active shooter situation like what happened in Las Vegas last year. They left 58 people dead and hundreds more hurt but also incidents like the New York City truck attack. Should we be surprised that a kid 14 years old, that young, that they would even be thinking about taking their own life? Unfortunately, a few months ago, we had to sadly report about his nephew committing suicide. He went to Aner Middle School. And John, what's your question tonight?